Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist here in Georgia, coming to you with your next mental health moment. In keeping with the tradition of Black, Indigenous, and People of Color Month, I am going to be talking to you about what not to say. So I know that just even the term Black, Indigenous, and People of Color brings up a lot of emotions from people. Uh, people have a lot of questions about why all the different names, why do they change? Everybody seems to want to be called something different. I never know what's appropriate to say. Why do I have to be politi politically correct? Even if I think I'm saying the right term or using the right words and pronouns and nouns, then it, it seems like people are still offended. Why bother? I just feel like giving up. Um, and, and I will say to you that, yes, it is work to be present. It is work to think about other people. Um, and it is important to show people that they are important and they are of value. And whereas that may make you uncomfortable at times when you're trying to figure out what to say, just keep in mind if you're being open and honest and coming from a place of sincerity and coming from a place of affirmation and appreciation, that response to you is going to be very different than if you're coming from a place of frustration or a place of not validating how someone wants to be referred to. And do keep in mind that it is a person's right to be called things that make them feel comfortable and that they feel are validating to their experience. I want you to know that this video is not the end all be all. There are definitely um, other approaches that won't be covered in this video. And it is always important to check in with people and not assume what they wanna be called, how they wanna be referred to. And, and that is really the purpose of this, is to just get us to be a little bit more aware, a little bit more sensitive, um, sincere and kind in our interactions with other people. None of us knows exactly what to do all the time. Take some pressure off yourself thinking that you need to know everything. Um, but again, if you're coming from a place of sincerity and honesty and one of learning, then people are gonna be very more, much more open to talking to you about things. So I think it's always important to start with, here's what not to do. So even if you are uncertain what to do, uh, I can tell you here are some things that you should not do. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of these things are still common. Um, so I know it can be challenging to approach people, but jokes, racial jokes, sexual jokes, they're, they're not appropriate. They're not appropriate for the workplace. They're not appropriate for your colleagues. They're not appropriate for people that you consider to be loved ones and friends. Like they're just not appropriate. And I know a lot of people use humor as their way to connect with others. And a well-placed joke can be awesome. But we want to stay away from jokes that refer to people by names that they may consider to be uh, racist or names that they may be that they may consider to be hurtful or that may bring up trauma or be triggering for them. And so when in doubt, err on the side of don't. Um, we've all said some jokes that we know are inappropriate and off color. Uh, and there is a time and a place, but I will tell you, um, more often than not, it's not the time and it's definitely not the place. Um, it was joke, calm down. We like to say that, right? You cannot tell people how to feel about something that you said to them. If they find it offensive, they find it offensive. Uh, so you don't need to try to validate yourself by saying, oh, you're the sensitive one, right? Don't. Um, if you say something that's offensive to someone, recognize that it's offensive. And again, if we don't say these inappropriate jokes, we don't have to worry about that response. Um, and we like to use the blanket, blank people are racist too. Black people are racist too. Asian people are racist too, as if that justifies our statement. Again, trying to make a qualifier for something that you did that's inappropriate. The reality is you said something that a person deemed as racist. And I know that word racist is very triggering for people and they get really defensive when someone uses that terminology. Uh, and, and again, uh, we like to argue with people and we wanna be right as opposed to having this relationship. Um, but I encourage you again to think about the relationship. So it is not, uh, well, I'm not a racist or I have X friend, a black friend, a Latinx friend, 
Um, and so that makes me not a racist or what I did was not a racist. Those are not responses you need to say. Just take them out of your vocabulary. We'll talk about some things that are more appropriate to say. One of the other things that we do often when we're interacting with people is we question whether or not they experience something. Are you sure that's what they meant? Are you sure that's what happened? Are you certain that you understood it? As if to say this person doesn't have the ability to understand how a situation came across or to understand what their experience was. And I wanna be clear, two people can watch a movie and walk away with very different experiences from that movie and they both can be right. So even if you did not experience it in the same way this other person did who's describing it to you, it doesn't make it any less valid for them that that was their experience. Um, uh, this is one that really frustrates, particularly people who are multiracial. Hmm. I've never dated a person of said ethnicity. I bet we would have some beautiful babies. I just want you to think about that for a minute. What might somebody feel about you making that statement to them, right? Like you are just saying to them, oh, yeah, your purpose on earth is to procreate with me so we can have some cute kids. You talk about invalidating a person's experience and making them feel like a sexualized object. So no, let's just not. Um, you are so smart, well-spoken, beautiful, talented, athletic for a uh, insert whatever ethnicity there or even insert whatever skin color there. You're so beautiful for a dark child. You're so beautiful for a black person. Like, why do we have to put those qualifiers out there? You're so educated. You speak so well for a, instead of just saying to a person that they're educated or they're talented or, or uh, you admire what they, they did, right? We have to put those quantifiers on there as if to negate, like you, not on any other standard would you be educated or beautiful or talented, but for your people, you are. That's a no-go as well. Um, how about people think that they can use the N-word or trailer trash or um, redneck or um, speaks or spades or all of these very negative, ugly terminology. And we think, well, I've heard people from a, that same ethnic group who that is used to describe say that also a no-go. So I want you to know that I don't care if you see everyone in that ethnic group using that derogatory terminology, you don't get to do that. Just no, okay, no. Um, everything is not about race. And I think we have to ask ourselves, why do I need to say that? When someone is describing to me an experience that they had in which they feel like they were discriminated against or some comment was made to them because of their race, why do we feel the need to say everything is not about race? I didn't say that everything was. I was describing to you my experience in this moment. I want us to stay present in this moment, right? Like everything is also not about a broken ankle. But when I go get my, my ankle checked because it might be broken, I wouldn't want my provider to say everything is not about a broken ankle. I would want them to be present in the moment with me and my broken ankle, okay? How did your parents meet? Um, no, right? Because we're really just trying to get at what is a person person's ethnicity? Are they multiracial? Um, did their parents end up experiencing something when they got together or where'd you come from? Like, what, like ask the question that you want to know the answer to. Stop beating around the bush. And again, there are more appropriate ways to ask someone about their cultural upbringing as opposed to what are you and other things like that. So let's get into that. What are some other things that we can do instead? Because I think it's very important, not just to talk about what not to do, but what can I do instead? All right, so we know that again, these racial jokes and, and these epithets, they are not okay, they're just not. And so I don't really have for you some recommendations about good racial jokes because no. Um, but on the other hand, what I will say to you as if you are in a space with people and, and you and your family joke, know your audience, know who you're talking to, know who you're around. And again, you wanna err on the side of caution, err on the side that someone 
could be offended. And so make sure whoever you are in a space with, whenever you're talking to them, you're talking to them about appropriate things. Again, there are a lot of great jokes out there that don't involve race that you can share, that you can make people laugh. People do tall tales all the time with their family members and family members know that these folks are exaggerating the truth at the family barbecue, but that's one of the things they look forward to is to hearing these jokes. So you can still be funny and use that as a way to connect with people because humor is good for the soul without you having to say something negative about a person in order to make other people laugh, okay? Just remember that all jokes aren't funny, um, especially if I am the person that's the punchline, right? So find some other ways to be a stretch that mind, work hard for that joke and allow people to be able to see all of your skills and your ability to deliver some humor. Um, and again, we know racism is a trigger word. We know racist is a trigger word, but I encourage people instead of arguing with people about whether or not you're a racist or whether or not what you said or did um, could be interpreted as racist, but try to understand what made the person feel that way. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to come across in that way. What did I do that was offensive to you? Take the time to see what a person may be sharing with you that you can possibly apply in other situations. All of us need feedback about our behavior. All of us need to be better. There's always opportunities for us to grow. So take that as an opportunity for growth. And it may be something that was simply a misunderstanding that could be cleared up simply if we have a conversation about it as opposed to you getting defensive and upset because someone used that label with you. Okay, check in with people. Take that time to see what might I be doing that may be coming across. Um, and that leads to don't question people's experiences. When people share with you they had a negative experience that they think was based on race, then you don't have to agree with them in order to be present with them in that moment. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that happened to you. I would be very frustrated if that happened to me as well. That You don't have to agree with what they're saying in order for you to support them in their experience. And those are two different things. Again, people always feel the need to argue points and like, I need to be right, you need to see it from my perspective. How about I actually validate your experience as a person and that I acknowledge it may be different than mine, but it is still very true for you. And that is a hurtful moment for you. And that's what I need to be present in, the emotion of the hurt, not try to argue with you about whether or not you should or shouldn't be hurt about a situation. Um, stop attacking uh, people using racist terms and terminology. But instead, I encourage you to be able to, when you're looking at a person, see that person's characteristics and not their ethnicity as the thing that you describe about them, right? So we have this bad habit of doing, uh, oh, I saw this black person and they were doing this. Oh, I saw this white person and they were doing this. Um, when we're talking to people, we can just simply say, wow, there was a very talented athlete that I saw. Talented athlete, right? This person that plays sports. Not, not that this person is good at sports because they're black. Not that this person is um, model minority, well-educated because they're Asian, but simply, but this is a talented young scholar. This is a talented young man I saw. This is a talented young woman I saw, or um, the little babies when you see them doing well and you just describe their achievements. You don't have to attach an ethnicity onto any of it or their beauty for that matter. Like you are a beautiful little girl, right? You're a handsome young man. Um, not for a black boy, not for a little colored girl, but simply because you are beautiful. And um, I love the way your voice, the intonation in it sounds. I love to hear you speak and read you, uh, read with such excitement and you pronounce your words so well, right? None of that attached to race. We can do that. We can stop attaching people to categories and just see them as people that have talents as opposed to people with a certain ethnicity. Like, oh, I'm surprised that you have this talent because you're this ethnicity or you have this talent because you're that ethnicity. And we need to get out of the habit of, of those stereotypes. Um, you don't ever need to validate anything by saying you have a friend who is of a certain ethnicity. Like that does not give you any kind of credit or, or kudos in anybody's community. So please stop doing that. Um, that That is like saying, oh, I should be a great candidate for mayor because I have friends who are mayors. No, like we care about your qualifications and your ability to do the job well. Um, we care about you as a person and your ability to be, to be connected to a variety of people, right? So you don't need to use that you know some other people as that quantifier. 
Um, and, and I think that is really important that instead you, you can say to people like, I don't have a lot of experience with particular ethnic groups, if you'd like to put that out there. Um, so I, I don't want to be offensive, but you mind if I ask you some questions? And you can do the same thing when you want to know a person's ethnicity. Like, hey, I was just wondering about your ethnicity. Are you comfortable sharing that with me? Ask people, get their permission. Don't try to box people in the corner and force them um, to tell you something about themselves because maybe they don't want to and that is their right. And if they say no, then you say, okay, I respect that. And you keep it moving. Right? You cannot make people do anything, but the goal is if we want to learn, we have to create an environment where people feel safe and comfortable to be open with us, as opposed to you're going to use it in some negative way. And that's why people are guarded, because they've had negative experiences with people when they may have shared things about their race and ethnicity. And so they're a little hesitant to do so, understandably. So they want to make sure that you're not going to take that information and harm them in some way. Right? So being patient in that process. Um, if you want to know something, honestly, the best way to do is just ask. But we want to ask in ways that are appropriate. We don't want to make assumptions. Um, we don't want to interrogate people either. Like you don't want to just fire off a bunch of questions to people. And truthfully, when people are comfortable with you, oftentimes they'll share more information with you. You don't even have to ask. So sometimes we just need to allow relationships to be able to have a chance to grow and develop instead of trying to push them and force them. So please, when you are out at the store and you see some beautiful little babies, do not go up to somebody's parent and ask them, what are they? They're so pretty. How'd you make them like that? What y'all mix with? No, oh, please and thank you. Let's not do that. Um, if you wanna say that the babies are beautiful, say the babies are beautiful. And again, per my last video, do not touch these children or their faces, or their hair, or their person, or their parents, or anyone that is pregnant, who you may also think will be having other beautiful babies. Okay, again, boundaries, as we discussed in the last video. This is not as hard as we make it. These are just steps that we can take. One, to make ourselves not come across as bulldozing people, to get information, but also to recognize that there is a variety of diversity around us. And yes, we may be very curious about that diversity. We may have questions. We also can look up resources. We don't have to interrogate people to find them out. There are a lot of websites. There are a lot of people that specialize in, in race and ethnicity and they share all this information. There's books so you can see people. You don't have to actually do touch uh, and, and feel when you see people, right? They are not show and tell. So there are a variety of ways that you can be connected and understand and even terminology wise, stay up on your terminology. And if you're not, it's okay, but just be able to receive some feedback about it when someone says, hey, I have a preference that you refer to me with this term as opposed to that one. Okay, and again, not all the same. Nobody's a cookie cutter and nor do they have to be just to make us comfortable. All right, be patient, be kind, be sincere, be understanding, be encouraging, be loving, be accepting, be encouraged.